What's going on guys, Jason Messi here and welcome to a brand new video and welcome to your daily dose of transfer content. And today it is going to be Monday the 24th of August. We have confirmed us to go through as well as the rumours. So just before we get started, if you could do our good stuff by leaving a like rating, press the subscribe button if you're new and press the bell notification next to it so you never miss an upload. Yesterday's episode will be down below in the description box and the current schedule every day at 8am UK time there will be a new video for you to look forward to. And finally drop a comment below, I'll try to respond to as many as I can. So starting off with a transfer that had a lot of people talking on social media. So Arsenal announced the signing of Salah Adin, and they done it by saying welcome to the Arsenal, Salah. Of course people like thought it was Mohamed Salah at first and uh, thought Arsenal were being a bit trolly. But the 17 year old has joined on a free transfer, that's after his release from Feyenoord. He'll play for the academy for the time being and um, apparently has got a lot of potential. Lazio are closing in on the signing of Milan goalkeeper Pepe Reina, and this is according to various different outlets. Valencia have been strongly linked with a 37 year old, but he now looks set to complete a permanent move to the Stadio Olimpico. Reina spent the second half of last season on loan at Aston Villa, and he helped the club stave off relegation from the Premier League. Jose Callejon is in talks to join Villarreal as a free agent, that's after spending seven years with Napoli. The deal is looking pretty likely now and he could follow the likes of Coquelin, Danny Parejo and Kubo in joining Unai Emery's side for next season. And that story is from Gianluca Damasio. New Barcelona boss Ronald Koeman still thinks Felipe Coutinho has a future at the Camp Nou. And this is according to Mundo Deportivo. The Dutchman has planned to speak to the midfielder about his career ambitions, that's after the Champions League final between Bayern and PSG, which for you guys would have been last night. Coutinho is currently on loan at Bayern, but still has three years left to run on his current contract with Barca. And who knows, maybe him staying at Barca for next season could do in the world of good. He's a player that, for Liverpool for example, he was so so good and he essentially warranted the 140 mil Barca spent on him. It obviously didn't go to plan for him in Spain and I think under a new manager with a fresh slate, it could be a great opportunity for him and uh, Barca might try and make that a possibility. AC Milan are ready to steal a march on Arsenal, that's by launching a bid for Real Madrid midfielder Dani Ceballos, and this story is from The Telegraph. The Spain international spent last season on loan at the Emirates, and a return either on a loan deal again or a permanent basis, it looked most likely this summer. There were some reports saying that Madrid wanted to keep him for next season, um, so his future is definitely up in the air. Fulham are the latest club to declare an interest in QPR attacking midfielder Abiri Eze, and this is according to Sky Sports News. The 22 year old was left out of QPR squad for their pre season friendly against Wimbledon on Saturday, that's in expectation that a move is imminent. Crystal Palace, West Ham, Newcastle, and West Brom they've all shown interest in Eze, who's valued in the region of £20 million. AC Milan are not giving up on their pursuit of Benfica midfielder Florentino, and this is according to Calcio Mercato. The Portuguese giants want to keep the 20 year old for at least one more season, and to try and help them do so, they have put a 30 million euro asking price that's to warn the Rossoneri off. Milan meanwhile, they're still trying to get their man, but they're trying to talk Benfica down from the 30 million uh, to a two year loan deal with an option to buy. Fulham are also trying to compete with a Serie A side and had a bid rejected last week. And I also mentioned the Leeds United rumours and that was a few weeks ago, but to be fair Leeds are linked to new players pretty much every single day. AC Milan are getting closer to the signing of Bakayoko. Positive talks with Chelsea have happened over the last few days and it would be a loan deal with an option to buy in June 2021. Bakayoko wants to return to the San Siro and personal terms have already been agreed. This story is from Fabrizio Romano. He did mention a few days ago that the option to buy would be about 35 million euros and a loan fee would be 3 million. So from one Frenchman potentially leaving Chelsea, now we have a Frenchman potentially joining. So Sky Sports are saying that Chelsea are in talks that's to sign free agent and defender Malang Sarr. The 21 year old left Nice at the end of last season, that's after spending his entire career with a league on side. 
If the Blues do sign the France under-21 international, he would be loaned out for next season. Valencia's left-back Jose Gaia is a subject of interest from Barcelona, and this story is from Sport. The 25-year-old has a 50 million euro buyout clause in his contract at the Mestalla, and the Blaugrana are ready to open negotiations with his current employers. Valencia have already offloaded captain Danny Parejo and Francis Coquelin, that's amid a major squad overhaul. But they are unlikely to allow Gaia to leave for a cut price fee, and um, he's one of the few players they aren't really looking to sell. It's like two players they're keeping or trying to keep, the rest, they're on the transfer market. And um, bear in mind, Barca were linked to Angelino yesterday from Manchester City, so they might be trying to replace Jordi Alba. Andrea Perlo and Gianluigi Buffon have, according to La Cuarta, connected Barcelona midfielder Arturo Vidal. The Chilean has previously spent time in Turin and he could be taken back to the Serie A champions this summer. That's after seeing an exit door opened at the Camp Nou. And it could make a lot of sense because Juve are opening up a lot of spots in their midfield. The likes of Sami Khedira has essentially been released, Matsuidi's been moved on to into Miami, and um, apparently they're looking to get rid of Aaron Ramsey. Nicholas Tagliafico is wanted by Leicester City to replace Chelsea-bound Ben Chilwell, and this is according to the Daily Mail. The Argentina international has long been linked with a move to the Premier League, in particular to Chelsea, and he could end up heading out of Ajax this summer. He'd cost in the region of about 30 to 32 million pounds, and uh, Ben Chilwell is set to exit for about 50. Manchester United see Bournemouth's David Brooks as an alternative target to Jadon Sancho, and this story is from the Express. The Red Devils could sweep for the 23-year-old midfielder, that's if they fail to lure Sancho away from the Bundesliga side. Bayern Munich's Kingsley Coman and also Juventus's Douglas Costa, they are both also on United's list of alternative targets. Other outlets are saying United are willing to walk away with the Sancho deal or from the Sancho deal because they're not really willing to pay Dortmund's asking price and Sancho looks like he won't be pushing for a move. A very short story from a bowler in Portugal is that Tottenham have been in contact with Benfica, that's over a possible move for midfielder Pizzi, but as of right now they're yet to make any official bid. The article doesn't say how much he'll cost the club, but so far Spurs have bought in two players in Johar and also Pierre Emil Hoiberg. The next story is from Telefoot Shane. They're saying that Lille have received offers from Leicester City and Inter Milan, that's for 22-year-old attacker midfielder Jonathan Ikone, but the club is unsure about selling. And the player himself hasn't made it clear that he wants to leave the club, that's why Lille are somewhat reluctant to sell. If he was to force a move, maybe Leicester or Inter could get their man. Juventus have seen an approach for Tottenham midfielder Giovanni Lo Celso turned down, and this is according to Calcio Mercato. Jose Mourinho made it clear that the 24-year-old is not for sale, that's after the Bianconeri registered their interest in his services. Lo Celso's move to Spurs was made permanent in January, that's following a six-month loan deal from Real Betis, and he's one of the few like bright sparks from the last campaign, and they're not looking to sell him whatsoever. Everton have told Barcelona they'll have to pay £143 million, that's if they want to sign former target Richarlison, and this is according to the Daily Mirror. The Spanish Giants had an £85 million offer for the Brazilian forward rejected in January, and since then they have been linked to him yet again, and uh, most recently since Ronald Koeman took over as manager. The Toffees though do not want to see their star striker leave, so it would take a huge offer for them even to consider a deal. And this is the second Everton player linked to the Camp Nou in just a few days. Richarlison makes a lot more sense, the other one with uh, Michael Keane, not so much. And now we have got two stories about Spanish midfielder Thiago, and the first one is from the Daily Mail. They said Arsenal have joined Liverpool in the hunt for the Bayern Munich star. The German Giants are keen to sell the 29-year-old this summer, that's because the player is about to enter the final year of his contract. Liverpool are also believed to be targeting the Spaniard and may now step up their interest in the wake of Arsenal's inquiry, though both clubs right now they are reluctant to meet Bayern's asking price of €30 million, Euros, or £27 million. Pounds. And then a story which broke on Saturday night is from Kevin Palmer. 
He said that Thiago will tell the Bayern Chiefs about his intentions of moving to Liverpool. That's after their Champions League final. Again, that would have been for yesterday or last night for you guys. Uh, for me, I'm still really looking forward to it. And uh, Liverpool have already made tentative steps towards signing Thiago and he is seen as Wijnaldum's replacement should he move to Barcelona. And they do mention a deal will be done. It's been the general consensus, I think that's the right term I'm using there, that Liverpool fans they assume that when the Champions League final is done, that's when Thiago and the stories can start really picking up. Because realistically the talks are never going to be taking place with Bayern having a massive match to come up, but the potential of it done now or with it done now, Thiago may make the move to Anfield. Paris Saint-Germain's top summer target, Sergei Milinkovic-Savic, is a more realistic option after the club's Champions League run, and this is according to La Ten Sport. With renewed confidence in sporting director Leonardo to get things right, club owners QSI, they could be prepared to give the Brazilian more freedom in the transfer market. Barcelona are willing to include Luis Suarez, that's in a part exchange deal to sign Donny van der Beek from Ajax. And this story is from Mundo Deportivo in Spain. The Blaugrana are hoping that offering the Uruguayan striker, it can reduce the final fee for the Dutchman down to about 20 million euros. His uh, asking price I think is about 40, so the rumoured 50 to 20 for Suarez does make kind of sense. And van der Beek has been linked with rivals Real Madrid and uh, Manchester United, but Barca are determined to win the race for his signature. I think Ajax would be fairly satisfied with that offer because Suarez coming back would be huge for them and uh, Van der Beek's future has been up in the air for over a year now. But that guys is going to be it for this video. So if you could do that good stuff by leaving a like rating, press the subscribe button if you're new and press the bell notification next to it so you never miss an upload. Yesterday's episode will be down below in the description box and the current schedule every day at 8 MEK time, there'll be a new video for you to look forward to. So thank you for watching, I'll see you next time.